Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe these days. I have gotten my hands on a B550 chipset based motherboard over here. I did actually get my hands on one of these motherboards previously, but unfortunately I realized that for the particular build I had it in mind, I was gonna be using a second generation Ryzen CPU. And unfortunately this particular chipset, slight little downside of it, it does not support second chip uh, generation or first generation, even though many motherboards these days probably don't anyway. This will support only third and the most recent, obviously fourth generation 5000 Ryzen CPU. Seems like this particular board here already has a BIOS update. And this is actually a little sticker they just slap right on here just to indicate that. This BIOS is uh, Ryzen 5000 ready to go. This particular board here is the MSI B550 Gaming Plus motherboard. There's definitely a number of differences between this particular chipset motherboard and also the popular X570 motherboard, which I've actually owned quite a few of them and done a couple of reviews on them myself so far. And I'll definitely try to go through all those as much as I possibly can. Let's go ahead and flip this back here, look at some details here. Here's that particular little beauty of a motherboard here. It does have PCIe Generation 4 support. I originally thought this actually would not support generation four when you're actually using the ssd so that wonderful samsung 980 pro ssd drive that i did a review on some time back will probably be working at its top speeds here so if you want to check that review out by all means go right ahead definitely uh, definitely a top-notch ssd there so here we have a couple more details here obviously there's a couple little differences between this chipset and the other one, I'll definitely go through those as I go by here. Let's take a look at some other options here as well too. Oh, interesting, check that out. This actually does have what I uh, was thinking some of these boards did have, basically just plugging a uh, USB thumb drive to update the BIOS. So no need to actually plug in the CPU in there if your board happens to need a BIOS flash. You can see here just some more details the board has here. It also does have that M2 Shield uh, heatsink which some people say it's good, some people say it's bad. Completely uh, up to you if you want to use it or not. I've actually had one computer using it, one not, and really don't notice the difference for the most part. One thing I do like about this board is that the IO shield right over here, that back plate, as we always like to call it, is actually built on. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this box. Uh, you did already see me remove the motherboard from here. Let's see what else there is in here, probably just your Probably just some pamphlets, of course your manual, so basically you know where those front um, LED connectors are and whatnot for the power switch. CD driver, which who even uses that anymore. I'm actually surprised they're still including these, but he must be old fashioned, so by all means, I'm absolutely, um, definitely not against them. Some more documentation here. And probably like a little quick setup, how to install your uh, Ryzen CPU on here, the heatsink, taking the back plate off, taking the protection stuff off as well too. And of course, a little screw for your M2 SSD slot as well too, to hold that down. This particular motherboard actually does not have uh, built-in Wi-Fi, which is perfectly fine. I'm actually gonna just be doing some testing with this board. And uh, I'll be honest, on many computers for the most part, I don't even use the built-in uh, Wi-Fi connection. What I do use on occasion is the Bluetooth, so I absolutely welcome that. And this board, unfortunately, will not have that either. This is a slightly lower tier motherboard, um, the Gaming Plus. So if you definitely do want Wi-Fi and some other options as well too, go a little bit higher to basically the Carbon Gaming uh, Pro, I believe, and some other, the MPG Gaming Pro. Um, those are definitely some good options to have here. Of course, if you really, really want to go all out, you might want to just consider upgrading to the X570 chipset, which will probably give you some more PCI um, Express Gen 4 options as well too. Motherboard is already out. Let's go ahead and take a look here. I actually already took the anti-static bag and sleeve off. And go ahead and uh, take a look here. For dim slots for memory, of course, there's your AM4 socket for your Ryzen CPU. There's these two brackets over here that can easily be removed to accommodate any heatsink, including the generic heatsink that are include stock heatsinks, as we call them, that are included with uh, most Ryzen CPUs. Bear in mind, a lot of uh, fourth generation Ryzen CPUs, the 5000 CPUs, do not actually come with heatsinks. It's something to keep in mind, including the Ryzen uh, 5900X CPU that I finally got my hands on after months. 
and months of waiting. Let's take a look here. You have your two PCI Express slots. This one's probably going to be the only one running at X4 speed. And this one will probably be running at Generation 3 speed. So just, uh, actually, let me rephrase that. Uh, <laughs> this will be your X16, obviously, running at Gen 4, PCI Express Gen 4. So obviously another little uh, difference between the X570 and the B550 chipset over here. Decent amount of uh, SATA slots actually. Many motherboard manufacturers are actually cutting down on these, usually like four of them. I've even seen one with two, and that's not even a micro uh, ITX board or anything like that. So six is actually a pretty decent number. Um, obviously if you're gonna be connecting only a uh, SSD on the M2 slot right over here, may not actually be necessary for you whatsoever. Speaking of slots over here, we do have another M2 NVMe slot over here. And as you guessed it, this one is going to be your PCI Express Gen 4. This is probably going to be your Generation Speed 3. So just another thing to keep in mind here. Even though I'll be honest, let's say for example, if you have a 970 Pro and you have a 980 Pro, <laughs> I actually did a quick two minute video of data transfer between the two of them. You really won't be missing out too much. So you get three gigabytes <laughs> a second speed as opposed to five. It won't take you that long to copy or 52 gigs. So pretty excellent layout of the board over here. You have a number of, uh, of course, old fashioned USB 2 slots, that, um, ports down here. Of course, your uh, system fan slots as well, lower the place. And of course, uh, let's see what other option we see here. Of course, one USB 3 connector here. But we also do have one up here as well too. This is basically, I believe, your USB-C connector. So if your motherboard does have that wonderful little connection, really awesome to actually make use of it. Let's take a look over here on the side. A couple more details here. Looks like we have a total of about eight USB slots back here. One of them is USB-C. Your two USB 2 ports over here. Very questionable about why they do that, but eh, you know, I'm not going to bother. That's probably your keyboard and your mouse slot over here. A couple of additional slots. MSI is a little strange with their USB uh, colors here. It's like we have black, we have blue, we have red. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm sure you can definitely look into it and see uh, what the colors actually mean. They're definitely um, all these over here are USB 3. Um, call me out. Maybe these two here are actually USB 3 as well, too. Of course, your traditional PS2 slot, and uh, this will actually be very useful for a little experiment I'm going to do on this board later on. If you're curious about it, check out the end of the video. And that will actually give you a little preview of what's to come in another video. So, of course, here, as I mentioned earlier, this is the basically like a little heat sink kind of thing. Um, they have a particular MSI, a particular name for theirs. Some other boards actually have been implementing this. And of course, it's a little bit of a mixed review thing so far, whether or not it's actually, you know, useful or not. But I'll be honest. Still, it's the jury's still out for me. I actually do have a computer that is using one, and uh, can't really say I'm, I'm complaining about throttling, even after <laughs> copying over about 60 gigs of uh, files over. Um, but I guess uh, let me know in the comments what your particular experience is if uh, actual heatsink, built in heatsink like this on the motherboard, has been useful. Obviously, using a regular heatsink like uh, one you use on the CPU or anything. I'm sure you definitely are getting cooler speeds and the chance of throttling back is significantly reduced, obviously. So let's go ahead and plug this board in. I'll explain a couple more features uh, once the board's inside and we get the CPU installed as well too.
So it is up and running. Really hope you enjoy the small little clips here and there of putting that thing together. I was actually taking apart a X370 based motherboard computer and um, just uh, taking that out over here so I can pop this board here and get this going. I'm actually using a 3700X Ryzen 8 core CPU, 16 thread, as you can see up there. And of course, uh, just some 32 gigs of RAM that I've had on the side as well too. So right now everything's running at base, nothing overclock. Obviously this is the first time this uh, system is actually posted up. It did obviously MSI boards usually just give you a little warning message to hit F1 to so go into the setup and BIOS as you can see over here. There's actually, uh, MSI usually likes to stick to two uh, sides, uh, flip sides here of their BIOS. One's gonna be basically this uh, easy kind of mode here, basic kind of mode. And of course up here you can see there's this advanced mode which I'm actually more used to. I'm gonna go ahead and try to go over as much as I can over each one. Obviously here are CPU details you can see here. Uh, a couple of options down here which I believe remain the same when you start clicking around. Yep, definitely for sure. Um, up here you do have some um, overclocking profiles if you want to. These are more um, connected to your memory obviously. And of course over here, boot priority, big humongous list over here, which obviously you can knock out a lot of them. Usually I'm just uh, very uh, obsessive, obsessive compulsive about this. I actually remove uh, a bunch of stuff over here and just leave the, basically the main boot device and maybe the USB option as well too. CD option, DVD option if you still use more drive. Um, right over here, the option for memory overclocking and whatnot. Obviously you will see these numbers change if you actually do choose one of these uh, two overclocking profiles over here. Um, I, this particular memory is 3000 speed, so I can go ahead and change it to its appropriate speed here and get the proper frequency. Obviously memory speed does make a difference here and there. It's definitely been proven. Though, of course, you know, just doing regular things like in Windows and opening up Word and stuff like that, you there is a difference. You probably won't see it though. Storage options over here. If you had any of the SATA ports, I actually did not connect a drive here. Install a M2 drive here and either of the slots, obviously everything here is all disabled or just not present, obviously. Over here, you do have some uh, fan modes here and this is actually a little bit more convenient than using it in the advanced mode. Um, you can actually switch over here to all the different fan mode side and um, obviously choose your option. You will only see an RPM here when there's actually a fan installed, so that's why you see zero RPM, obviously, in a number of areas here. Of course, here's your CPU fan speed here and CPU temperature. The CPU temperature is a little bit higher than anticipated. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's uh, just a little overclocked to some degree. This thing does tend to jump up and down in terms of speed. Help, hmm. some options over here basically some hotkeys to actually get into a couple of uh, options very quickly. And of course, right over here, we're gonna hit F7 just a moment, just before I actually go through a couple more little reviews here. Obviously click here if you're going to update your BIOS. You can see here, BIOS version is already from early 2021. I'm pretty sure that's probably a newer version, but this particular version was uh, put in to support fourth generation Ryzen 5000 based CPUs. As you saw in the box, a little sticker was put on so the board was updated and basically put back in prepped in to be sold favorites over here i'm guessing this is basically uh if you actually have some uh, settings that you'd like to save here and save it as one and other settings save it as two so you know just something here it could be overclocking settings it could even be boot settings that you wanted to save i'm actually not really using these i really barely ever use them at all once i actually do set up a predetermined setting and preferred setting for a motherboard or computer build i barely ever change them however if i'm going to have a test machine that i'm going to be tossing a lot of video cards and cpus in and memory chips etc this actually might be pretty useful obviously you just have to have a motherboard that will support all those cpus this particular one as i said is supporting only third generation and beyond in terms of ryzen so first and second gen may not work on this board there have been reports of uh, them actually working on some boards but it's just basically a hit or miss or just plain old luck and of course your hardware monitor over here this is basically the hardware monitor you'll actually see and fan control if you actually do choose the advanced option but you also can access it here a lot of details here that it gives you i believe msi has been using this particular option for some years now i've actually seen as early 
and possibly as early as the very first Ryzen motherboards actually. So I've actually really enjoyed the setting over here for controlling fan speeds and also the voltages, WM or DC settings, depending on which fan you're using, three pins or four pins here. Bear in mind also if you're actually using a hub, a little fan hub or a controller, um, obviously these numbers may not show um, correctly, unless of course there is a wire dedicated for that controller to actually give you accurate fan speeds as well too. And most of them actually do. I believe I only have one computer that actually has a controller and I just basically, it just is controlled by <laughs> a little knob in the front of the computer for slowing the, it's almost like turning on a switch, controlling it. So that's definitely pretty useful. Obviously a couple of little predetermined settings here, all default, full speed. I'm sure that's gonna be nice and loud. <laughs> So I'm not even going to bother clicking on that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the advanced section over here. Oh, nice little uh, picture over here. It kind of looks like basically the image you see on the box itself. That's actually pretty neat. A couple of more details you see up here. You do have your overclocking settings here, predetermined overclock settings from memory. Still, you see your boot priority, but you obviously do see a lot more options here. If I actually did have my own dedicated sound card, for example, you can actually go ahead and turn some things off here, for example, I actually turn off my sound card and other options here as well, too. Some further options you see as well, too. Just more USB configuration over here. Some other deeper configuration here as well, too, which may not actually be used as much. Some power settings, obviously, preferences you like to do if this computer was uh, just lost power or you just shut it off out of nowhere or it got turned off out of nowhere. Over here, another little bio setting. This actually is something to keep an eye, eye on. It actually can affect certain things, particularly your video card and what monitor you're using. And I'll definitely mention a little bit more details I had with this particular complications I had on a particular build with a particular monitor. Something to bear in mind there. Some other little settings here. This is actually new um, to actually test out your NVMe drive if there is actually is one and the option to even secure erase it, which is uh, pretty nice. Here, of course, is some uh, overclocking settings here, which I'm um, going to go ahead and just hit accept for the time being. And you actually see some options here for voltage and other controls as well, too. Pretty interesting that this is actually here. I would have thought it would all actually be under this section OC for overclocking. And you can actually see a bunch of options you have here. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and you do have the option to choose, uh, again, one of those two predetermined profiles here for overclocking. That's actually built into your specific memory chips. I'm going to go ahead and just actually select the 3000 speed. Further down, you see some more options, some more advanced uh, DRM options if you actually want to control timing settings over here manually as well, too. Pretty uh, interesting settings here. Obviously don't mess up with this if you're actually not too familiar with it. You could actually potentially damage something. Down here, very similar settings we just saw a moment ago with the CPU. I'm not really too big on overclocking. I actually just prefer the CPU to run at stock. And um, that's something I can actually go here and probably just start disabling um, some settings basically that kind of throttles the CPU beyond its speed. I don't really need that for the most part for the time being on this particular system. It's more, this computer is actually more geared for guest use and I don't really anticipate someone really, you know, benefiting too much from the CPU jumping another five or 10 degrees Celsius just to give you a better bit of a better speed. But that option is definitely there for anything you may want to use it for. Obviously over here, your M flash, if you want to actually go ahead and flash using the USB. Bear in mind, this motherboard does have the option to allow you to flash from a USB, even if there's no CPU, unless I'm incorrect there. Very useful if you happen to use a CPU that's actually not supported until you actually give it a BIOS update. In this case, this one is supporting all the latest CPUs, but when fifth gen Ryzen comes out in another year or so, that actually may be needed to install. Over here, some overclocking profiles as well, too. If you, have, you actually have some settings you want to save, you do have that option here, including actually saving profiles on a USB, which is pretty useful. 
I'm not sure exactly if it will benefit you from taking settings from a previous motherboard into this one, but if it's the same CPU, I guess you I can definitely see the benefit for that. And of course our hardware monitor that we saw before as well too, controlling some fan speeds, especially if you want to bring the fan speeds down to a certain speed so they're not too loud and uh, you know giving just giving off way too much noise from the particular system when you have a lot of fans for sure. And of course this particular option here I'm actually pretty fond of. Basically a board explorer that shows you in red when something is actually being used here. You can actually see our memory chips, the dim slots being used here, and obviously these are empty. G scale, that's the memory chips I'm using. Over here you can see if there's any um, SATA ports being used. Like I said earlier, there's no hard drive installed on this, so obviously they're all empty. On this side, obviously, I am using a USB port right over here. So it turns out these two ports are indeed USB 2.0 ports. Being as it may, um, those USB ports are going to be controlled directly, very likely, from the CPU or the chipset. So this may make life a little difficult for enthusiasts who are trying to install Windows 7 on that. And I'll definitely get into that later in another video. So obviously, if you do have things installed here, Plug in here your keyboard, webcam, printer, etc. You will obviously see that right over here. I got my little trusty wireless keyboard that I've been using for some time, and you've definitely seen in other videos. Oh, go ahead and go back in here one more time. You can even see the uh, video card here that's actually being used. And of course, if there was uh, some drives here in the M2 one slot, M2 two slot you'll see them as well too. So this one is actually this particular M2 slot that's running at PCI Express Gen 4 speeds is actually being controlled by the CPU over here. And of course the PCI Express slot as well too. Down here, this one, which is why the PCI Express slot is a different color. And of course the M2 drive are actually running on Gen uh, PCI Express Gen 3. And that's actually being controlled by the chipset right over here under this wonderful looking heatsink. It even tells you that chipset's actually there as well too. It'd be funny if you can actually chain chipset chips and uh, this will no longer be a B550, but possibly an X570, but that option is, is not here at this time. Very interesting idea to think about one day in the future. You can even see the little fans over here, USB slots, obviously external. I don't have these installed, so you won't be seeing them. So definitely a lot of uh, interesting options you have here. And of course, many other options you do have when uh, looking into the BIOS. Let me just click on one of these. This will probably give me the option on that here. If you go to boot, you will see the option here to go ahead and remove a bunch of things here and just have your main boot device and possibly the USB if you plan to boot this from USB at some point, maybe in terms of recovery or who knows what else. Something to keep in mind here as well too, as uh, Windows 11 was announced and a big thing was obviously brought up is obviously the TPM 2.0 option, which is right over here. You can see right now it's currently enabled, but you know, obviously I can go ahead and disable it if I like. After rebooting the board, you can actually see the memory is now running at the specified 3000 megahertz speed. And I don't believe I made any other real changes here but it looks like the board is pretty much all set to go. Um, kind of curious how the CPU temperature is almost at 50, just being in the BIOS, but sometimes that just seems to vary every now and then a little bit up or a little bit down, so it's not really a big deal. Fan is a little bit more audible at this particular temperature, judging from the settings that are actually predetermined over here. Now, obviously I can go ahead and change this. I'm pretty sure you might hear the fan getting a little bit louder, obviously, so I definitely don't want that. Pretty interesting colors over here on the board. Not as much as I've seen on other boards, but obviously do mind this is a slightly mid to slightly lower tier motherboard, so you're not gonna see this thing all bright everywhere. Obviously, nice little color showing up here that you can definitely control, and of course the memory has its own LEDs. Usually these particular boards here have an LED on the bottom. This one looks like it does have one down here. If you can actually see, it's going through basically cycling the RGB rainbow color. But it looks like that's actually it. There is no color here near the I.O. area. Oh, I almost actually hit my fan. <laughs> fingers on that fan. 
and there's none over here as well too usually underneath the board so that's a real bummer just so you know you can actually see what colors are and are not on this particular board usually you're not really after the board for the colors you do have the option to put led strips everywhere on the fans themselves so particularly I can't really say the motherboards really give up that much color, but if you actually wanted to just do the basic, this actually is uh, really nice. These uh, stock coolers that um, AMD gives you with the Ryzen CPUs now. Well, everyone, I really hope you found this uh, video useful. A pretty uh, quick overview of the uh, BIOS right there. And of course, a little clips installing the board itself. Let me know if you have any questions, particularly about this particular B550 chipset MSI based motherboard or other ones as well too. I will be experimenting on this board doing a little project in another video so definitely stay tuned for that. In terms this board definitely uh, pretty for its price point will definitely get the job done. It supports third and fourth generation Ryzen CPUs and I'm pretty sure with another BIOS update when they're released possibly fifth generation uh, quite possibly and unless of course they're moving on to a new socket which more and more I keep hearing the AM4 socket is actually going to be reaching the end of its lifeline and they're going to be moving on to AM5 with other options such as DDR5 memories and possibly even PCI Express uh, Gen 5. I'm not actually sure if they're really going to be doing that, but it's definitely out there to see. You know, AMD definitely likes to have uh, tricks up their sleeve out of nowhere uh, with uh, Gen 3 CPUs. They threw in uh, PCI Express 4, which uh, definitely has uh, introduced a lot of wonderful options. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to like and subscribe if this uh, video was uh, enjoyable and also useful to you in any way. And obviously, go ahead and shoot over any questions you may have. Thank thanks again for watching, everyone. And as always,